us another day to get it right. Hallelujah. A day that we've never seen before and a day that we won't see again. Hallelujah. 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 Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. This is your day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to just give her honor to God, who is truly, truly the head of my life, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. And I want to thank God for our pastor, hallelujah, who is a man that's truly after God's heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God that he allows us to stand up here. And I want to give honor to my husband. He's a working man. He's at work today, but I know, hallelujah, he's praying for me. And if you will, Pastor, I want to thank God for Miss Brenda. Hallelujah. My mom is deceased. And since my mama been gone, every time I have to give the word, she shows up. Hallelujah. Her and my mama were good friends, and she's been right there since the day my mama left. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. And he sent me another mother, Miss Marquia's mama. Hallelujah. I call her mama. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to talk out of turn. I'm just so grateful. In my mother's absence, I want to tell y'all who, who don't have a mother, God will send people. Don't shut people out. He will send people who will cover you, who will pray for you, who will love you. Our sister said yesterday on the message that she, she gave, she said, we always talk about a small circle. My circle so small. No, God is open. His circle is unbroken. Amen. When we are going through, we need to have somebody to call. We got Jesus, but he'll give us other people right here in the natural. Amen. So don't brag about a small circle. Don't brag about that. That's nothing to brag about. Amen. I've been there before. And when she said that yesterday, I'm like, she's so right. Because I don't have a small circle. I got y'all. Amen. Amen. Everybody in here is part of my circle. Amen. Amen. Everybody. How, I'm so grateful. I stand today with a grateful heart, y'all, with a grateful heart. And God has given me a word. Amen. He's given me a word. And I thank him for that. Let me pray. Father God, we come today, first of all, just to say thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Lord, I thank you for all the preparation that you have provided for this day. Lord, I thank you for every soul that is in the house today. Lord, this is no mistake for everyone that has come here today to receive a word from you, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that you continue to fill me up, that your word will overflow, Lord, to your people, Lord. Don't move me. I'm standing right here, Lord, and I need you to use me. If I move, there's no one here, Lord. I need you to use me today, Lord, for your glory, for your kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, my subject today is called, It's Time to Wake Up from Our Spiritual Coma. Amen. We've been in a spiritual coma for a long time. The scripture is going to come from Matthew 25, 1 through 13. If you will stand, it's time to wake up, y'all. The church doors are open. Amen. Sunday ain't going to get it. Amen. It's not enough. Amen. Amen. Would you turn to Matthew 25, chapter Chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, and it reads, let me go to my Bible. I told y'all to get there, and I ain't there yet. I'll just read from here. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. And I say to you again, it's time to awake from our spiritual coma. 
all y'all doctors in here, I'm, I, I'm going to give y'all my disclaimer right now. I am not a doctor, but I did research a coma. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> okay, so it's, when I read it, it was talking about in a coma, the person looks, they look like they are just asleep. The heart is beating. The body may move. There's a heart rate, depending on the stage of the coma, the person may randomly laugh or cry, but still remain unconscious. So today, I want to tell you it's time to wake up from the coma. Some of us have been asleep, amen, for too long. We come to church every Sunday, we hear a good word, yet we remain unconscious, amen, yes, remain unconscious, and unresponsive to the commands of God. See, when you're in a coma, they're poking on you, they're prying on you, and you're not, you can't understand, you can't hear it. Just like the word of God, amen? He's poking on us. We come in here on Wednesday, Sunday, t- just two days a week, two days a week, amen? And the word is poking on us and prying on us, and we just remain unconscious. But it's time for us to move. It's time for us to wait. Get the defibrillator. It's time to wake up, amen? It's time to move, Amen? And to awake to wake from a coma, one must first identify the underlying issue. Amen? Because when you're in a coma, the doctor has to do their research. Amen? They have to find out what the underlying issue is. Why? We've done all this. We've done all that. Why are they still in a coma? Something's going on with the brain. It's four stages, four or five stages to a coma. Amen? The first one, you can feel a little bit. You may be able to open your eyes. But that fifth one, your brain is dead. Let's not be dead when God comes back. Amen? Amen? He's calling us to wake up. Amen? But they have to underline the underlying issue, the cause. This must remind us, as Christians, how do we identify the cause of our coma? Amen? And I'm speaking from experience. I was, the pandemic, it took me to a spiritual coma. I'd be laying there in my bed, watching it on, on TV, online. When it opened back up, I'm like, oh, it ain't for everybody. I ain't signing up today. I'm just going to lay here. You know, but God's poking at me, crying on me. I could put my name on the list, but I didn't. I didn't. You know, he, I, didn't, I didn't listen to the command. He was pricking me. I'm just laying there, stuck in my coma, in my comatose state. I was coming. I hear it, but I'm not moving. Right. Amen. God calls on us to move. Yeah. Amen. We have to identify the issue. What is the reason for our spiritual coma? I'll tell you what it is. We're not putting the word in us. Right. Amen. Pastor does his job. Faithfully, I don't want to say religious because we got a relationship. This is not a religion. We have to have a relationship with Christ or it won't work. Amen. 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 Get you a relationship with him. Amen. He puts it in our, he, he, he worked faithfully. Amen. He labors in the word. If we got to labor in the word too, we can't expect him to do it. Because when God called him back, you, you think we going with him? It's a narrow way. <laughs> Hallelujah. It ain't wide. He can't hold our, our hand and be like, Lord, I got my people with me. No. <laughs> no. He can't do that. He can't do that. We got to get, you know, the, the word says work out your own salvation. Your own salvation, fear and truth. He's doing his job. We got a prayer call, y'all. I'm not sitting here to beat y'all up, but I'm telling y'all right now, if y'all, y'all better get on it. I'm not trying to beg you. I let God do what he going to do. But I'm telling you, I am blessed every morning. To get on that car. Yes. Do I pray every day? No. But do I hear the prayers? And this man gives us, it's like a, how many of y'all follow you version? Y'all follow you version Bible where they have the little devotionals, you do a little plan. We got our own plan at 630 in the morning. Amen. We don't even need you version. It's there, but he gives us a devotional. Amen. Literally every morning. Amen. He has a scripture and a word for the Lord. We got our devotional right here in the house. Everything we need is in the house to wake us up from the spiritual coma. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I, um, Roman, could you turn to Romans 12, 2 and 3? I'm going to tell you, you guys how to awake from the spiritual coma. This is what God has been giving me. This is what he's been giving me over the last few months. It's time to wake up. It's time for me to continue to wake up. Amen? It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Amen? That ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? And how do we renew our mind? By the word of God. Amen? By prayer and supplication. Amen? He says, seek me early while I may be found. Seek ye first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. You know, people say, well, all we got to do is pray about it. I can't stand that, Lord. That's the first thing we do. That's the first thing. The first resort is prayer because only God can fix it. You get some bad news or what we think is bad news, go to the throne. Before you get on the phone, go to the throne. Amen. It's time to go to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Next scripture, please. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to as God have dealt every man the measure of faith. What's your measure of faith? Amen. God deals with you in a measure of faith. From faith to faith. Amen. You got to have faith that God will wake you from the spiritual coma. Amen. We got to seek him. Amen. Amen. And then I have, when your mind changes, you will change. We renew our mind by studying the word of God, not just on Sunday or Saturday, but every day. Put the word in you. Amen. Wake up every morning with a word. Ask God to give you a word. He will. He will lead you late in the midnight hour. He will give you scriptures while you sleep. Yeah. The, when you start getting that, that's the relationship building. Amen. It's like, you know, when you, you have a mate, y'all courting. I like him. He kind of cute. But you don't just sit there thinking he cute. What you do? You get to know him. Amen. When we meet somebody we want to know, we get to know them. We spend time with them. We start out on the first date. You're like, mm, I'm kind of interested. I want to get, I want to get a little closer. Then we take another date. Then it begins three and four days a week. We see this person. Now, what if our mate only saw us once a week? Mate, you don't love me. So what? what how does that line up with the Word of God? Amen. You don't see somebody you love once a week. Not if you don't have to. Now, those who have jobs that requires that, that is what it is, but I bet you talk to them. I mean, I bet you, you're, if you have a mate that's deployed or working, I bet you, you don't let a night go by where you don't have a conversation. Amen. Our conversations with the Lord is so important. It's going to wake us up. I can't stress enough how important it is for us to wake up. He's given us the, the word of God, amen. amen. So, but every day, put on the word in us. We don't miss our meals every day. <laughs> Y'all know we don't miss no meals. You know, for the pandemic, a lot of us got swole. I can speak for myself. You know, I ain't going to call y'all out. I'm going to just speak for me because I like to eat. You know, I, I gained a little weight, but it's okay. It's happy weight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So we, I, we eat to live, not live to eat. Amen. We eat to live. We don't live to eat. That's the word of God. We eat it to live in our mind. Amen. It has to go to our mind and then it comes out of our heart. Amen. Y'all know y'all don't just live to eat right. Y'all know y'all got to eat. Okay. Amen. Just make sure we all are one accord. <laughs> the same principle applies to the word of God. If we don't eat it, eat of the word daily, our spirit will die. As humans, if we don't eat or we don't eat the right foods, because see, the word is a two-edged sword. It pierces, right? So it's a lot of food out there like broccoli, kale, spinach, you know, the vegetables. We don't always like that, but it's good for us. When that word start piercing us, we don't always like it because it's a mirror in front of us. And it shows us ourselves, but it's good for us. Amen. It's how we grow up. Amen. Because if we don't put the word in us, we don't grow up. You find yourself bitter, angry, always mad, just mad. Like in traffic, you just mad. You know, you're just angry. Where, the word, the word ain't in you. I know for me, if I ain't miss, I could tell. I mean, Lee could tell. He'd be like, ooh, you better get you some word. I could tell. I could tell. Amen. And those of us who have a relationship with Christ, you could tell. But you know what? If you don't have a relationship, the time is nigh. Amen. Our pastor's been talking about rapture ready for the last two months. Amen. If you following, follow. God is coming back. Amen. The Lord is coming back. Amen. It's time for us to get our house in order. I mean, I want to go when he come back the first time. I don't want to be here gathering up no buckets of water and all that. I want to go. We say, come on, I'm ready to go. Amen. Immediately, I want to meet him in the air. Amen. So we got to make sure we're eating to live. And it's, and it's purpose for us. Amen. His word is our purpose. It tells us how to live. It tells us how to walk. It tells us how to talk. 
It tells us how to breathe. It tells us where to go. God's word is a road map. Amen. Amen. It's a road map for our life. They call it believing instructions for your life before you leave earth. It's a road map for our life. Amen. It's all set up. It's all set up for us. It's time for us to come back to the house and do the work of the Lord. The pandemic caused a lot of us to go to sleep, like I said. And I said I was guilty of it. But it's so much work to do in this house. Amen. Amen. Wednesday, I'm telling y'all, Wednesday and Sunday don't get it. God, it's people out here. We the church in the city for the city. That's what our pastor's been talking about. That's good news, y'all. It's something to celebrate. It's souls out here that are, are lingering. They want the word. People want the word. People want discipline. Amen. The word disciplines us. Discipleship, discipline. The root word is discipline. Amen. God's word teaches us how to be disciplined in our life and our coming to him. Amen. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up even on Wednesday night. And I just got to say it because I got to give what God gave me. It be like, it don't be a lot of people. But you know what? Our pastor still get up there and deliver the word because of what God has called him to do. And I said it before. He can't hold your hand walking down the aisle. I know we go through, everybody want to call pastor, pray for me, pastor, pray for me. You, you encourage yourself to wake up because the man of God carries a lot of weight. Amen. So pray for his mind. And when you've been blessed, go tell the man of God that what he was praying for that happened. Don't have him running around here still praying for you. And you ain't told him God didn't deliver me from that. This man still be on his knees, God, please. Please. And y'all ain't said nothing to the man of God. Amen. I'm speaking for myself. The word comes for me before it comes to y'all. Amen. We have to make, make sure we, we lift up the man of God and tell him what, what you were praying for, Pastor. It's come to pass. Ooh, hallelujah. Okay, next. Amen. This is serious. Those prayers are serious. Amen. He carries a lot. Amen. It's time for us to wake up and encourage ourselves. Pray for ourselves. Go to God for ourselves. Hit our knees for ourselves. Amen. And pray for other people. I always used to tell my children when they were younger, don't pray selfish prayers. You know, when they got older, I began to be able to minister to, to, to them. Don't pray selfish prayers. I mean, don't just pray for yourself. Pray for other people. Lift up other people in prayer. Ask God to bless other people just as well as he's blessing you. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is, But the more I think about it for me, because I was, I was, wait a minute. I think I messed up and I'm so sorry. Amen. But I do want to say I'm work. Let's go to Hebrews 4.12. I got to say this. I got to read this to y'all. Amen. Because this word is quick. When you put it in you, it's quick. Amen. It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. The word knows our heart. Amen. It will pierce us. Amen. We just got to put it. It says quick, quick, and powerful. Amen. So instantly when we put the word in us, and the word, it would not return unto God void. When, when we put the word in us, it is going to do that which he sent it to do. Amen. Amen. I said, my accountability is to God is to God, not to man. And I said that earlier. And once we realize who holds us accountable, that's when we'll wake up. Amen. Our accountability is unto the Lord. And um, I'm going to tell you all about the way we avoid falling into a deep sleep in a coma. I want you to go to Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, please. Amen. This is how we keep ourselves from being in a spiritual coma. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about you with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, 
and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. All saints. Supplication of the Spirit, it says, watch us there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 630 prayer call, y'all. All saints. Amen. 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 Just watch it for all saints. Amen. We got to put on the whole armor, God. Protect our mind. Amen. Protect your mind. The way we protect our mind is to stay in God's word because when we're not in God's word, the trick, the enemy will get in. He can get in your mind, y'all, and he can control us. The blessed prayer of righteous, we got to protect our heart. Guard your heart. He's told us in his word how to guard our heart. Amen. Amen. And having our loins girded. Amen. Walk, walk, walk unto the Lord. Walk faithful. Amen. From faith to faith. What's your measure of faith? Check yourself. Amen. I have to check myself daily. What's my measure of faith? Amen. Do I move to the left, Lord, or do I move to the right? We have to ask him for every step we take. Amen. We have to seek him in all things, not the little things, all things. Like we think little things is like a breath. We do not breathe ourselves, y'all. We'll say, thank you, Lord, for the little things like my breath. That's huge. Because if I had to, to keep up with my breath, I would be dead. Amen. If I had to keep up with my eyes blinking, I would make it. Amen. Or talking. Amen. Or walking. Because, you know, if we lose one toe, our equilibrium going to be off. Amen. And that's how it is with the word of God. Everybody in here in this house, that's the part of this house is important. Amen. Everybody in this house is important. Every gift in this house is important. Amen. If we lose a finger, we're going to hurt. We're going to feel it. If we lose an eye, our peripheral is going to be off. Amen. It's going to be hard for us to look to the left. Amen. So every job that we have in this house is important. We just need to wake up. And I'm, that's all God gave me for today. I'm not going to hold you long because I'll be speaking of myself. Amen. God bless you.